Stand quietly, please. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Elizabeth. Please sit down. Yes, good morning indeed. Um, and I hope that this video assembly finds you all very well and that you've enjoyed your first day of home learning. Um, I do hope you took on board my message that I gave to you on Friday and that you're all very well behaved, your parents, I'm sure you were. Um, I have to say it's very strange standing here um, talking to a virtually empty hall, but I hope that you will listen to this message as keenly as you normally do on a Tuesday. And there is, of course, the added bonus that if you do happen to fall asleep while you're listening to it, uh, you can repeat it, you can rewind it, and you can listen again. Um, I know that is a normal occurrence when you do listen to me falling asleep, so uh, let's see how we go. Anyway, um, although uh, the phrase is we haven't got all day, we, we probably have got all day, quite literally, um, but your parents will want me to get cracking and get on with uh, the message so that they can get on with helping you get started on your home learning. So, here we go. Um, many of you will have heard about a man called Bill Gates. Bill Gates uh, co-founded Microsoft, that's a huge company you will have definitely heard of, um, and even if you're an Apple fan like I am, uh, you will have to accept that Microsoft, and in fact Bill Gates himself, um, has done an enormous amount for the world, a huge technologi technological, there's a good word, technological change for the entire world. Um, now, not only is he one of the world's wealthiest individuals, he is also one of the most philanthropic, there's another good word for you on a Tuesday morning, philanthropic. That means that he gives away his money. He's extremely generous, he's extremely charitable, um, and I do mean extremely. Incredibly, and I'm just checking my facts here, he's estimated to have donated well over 35 billion dollars to charities and to foundations. So why am I telling you about him? Well aside from his uh, extreme generosity, which is a fantastic example to all of us, um, he's also recently written an open letter talking about coronavirus. And I read that letter and I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Um, it's full of incredible messages uh, for each and every one of us, either young or old. Now, you will have been told by your teachers, I know, that you shouldn't believe everything that you read on the internet. So I have tried really, really hard to verify the source of this open letter, to see exactly where it was published. Um, and so far, the only source I can really find, if I'm honest, is from the Sun newspaper, and, and that's a publication unlikely to grace many of your parents' coffee tables, um, admittedly. But, as I say, um, I have tried to check it, even if it is not written by Bill Gates, um, although it slightly ruins the story, um, I still think the messages are really, really sound and really worthwhile and very much worth you listening to and understanding. Um, it also makes for the perfect first video assembly. So thank you, Bill, again, for being incredibly generous. And so, without further ado, let's just listen to his open letter. I'll read it to you. I'm sorry, um, I won't be trying to do the American accent. So here we are. He goes like this. I'm a strong believer that there is a spiritual purpose behind everything that happens, whether that is what we perceive as being good or being bad. As I meditate upon this, I want to share with you what I feel the corona COVID-19 virus is really doing to us. Number one, it is reminding us that we are all equal, regardless of our culture, religion, occupation, financial situation, or how famous we are. This disease treats us all equally. Perhaps we should too. If you don't believe me, just ask Tom Hanks. Number two, 
It is reminding us that we are all connected and something that affects one person has an effect on another. It is reminding us that the false borders that we have put up have little value, as this virus does not need a passport. It is reminding us, by oppressing us for a short time, of those in this world whose whole life is spent in oppression. Number three, it is reminding us of how precious our health is and how we've moved to neglect it through eating nutrient-poor, manufactured food and drinking water that is contaminated with chemicals upon chemicals. If we don't look after our health, we will, of course, get sick. Number four. It is reminding us of the shortness of life and of what is most important for us to do, which is to help each other, especially those who are old or sick. Our purpose is not to buy toilet roll. Number five. It is reminding us of how materialistic our society has become. Now that means how much we like to buy lots of different things that, are, that we probably don't need. And how, when in times of difficulty, we remember that it's the essentials that we need, food, water, medicine, as opposed to the luxuries that we sometimes unnecessarily give value to. Number six, it is reminding us of how important our family and home life is, and how much we have neglected this. It is forcing us back into our houses so we can rebuild them into our homes and to strengthen our family unit. Number seven. It is reminding us that our true work is not our job. That is what we do, not what we were created to do. Our true work is to look after each other, to protect each other, and to be of benefit to one another. Number eight, it is reminding us to keep our egos in check. It is reminding us that no matter how great we think we are, or how great others think we are, a virus can bring our world to a standstill. Number nine, it is reminding us that the power of free will is in our hands. We can choose to cooperate and help each other, to share, to give, to help and to support each other. Or we can choose to be selfish, to hoard, to look after only ourselves. Indeed, it is difficulties that bring out our true colours. Now, uh, just as an aside, there's a great song in that, by the way. Uh, ask your parents to play it for you after this message. True colours. Number 10. It is reminding us that we can be patient or we can panic. We can either understand that this type of situation has happened many times before in history and will pass, or we can panic and see it as the end of the world and consequently cause ourselves more harm than good. Number 11. It is reminding us that we can either be an end or a new beginning. This can be a time of reflection and understanding, where we learn from our mistakes, or it can be the start of a cycle which will continue until we finally learn the lesson we are meant to. Number 12. It is reminding us that this earth is sick. It is reminding us that we need to look at the rate of deforestation just as urgently as we look at the speed at which toilet rolls are disappearing off our shelves. We are sick because our home is sick. Number 13. It is reminding us that after every difficulty, there is always ease. Life is cyclical, and this is just a phase in this great cycle. We do not need to panic. This too shall pass. Number 14, the final point. Whereas many see the corona COVID-19 virus 
as a great disaster, I prefer to see it as a great corrector. It is sent to remind us of the important lessons that we seem to have forgotten, and it is up to us if we learn them or not. So whether Bill Gates actually said or wrote those words or not, I still think they are magnificent. So if you do nothing else in your home learning today, listen to those points again, or find them online and read them again, and try to understand them, and to take notice of them. All of us are going to have plenty of time for reflection in the, in the coming weeks, so I want us to try to think about those things, properly think about them, reflect on them. So, take a breath, make sure you're getting um, into some sort of new routine with your home learning. Get outside lots, enjoying the fresh air whenever you can, but be careful and make sure you follow the Prime Minister's advice when you do that. Embrace a slower pace of life than we're used to and really reflect on the things that are important. And finally, don't forget to ask your parents about that song, True Colours. Get them to play it for you after this and good luck trying to stop them singing along. Have a good day, everyone, and we will see you online very soon. Stand quietly, please.